Hello and welcome to the second video in our Antenna University series. Now this is all being recorded down here at Menace RC headquarters in the UK. Greg has kindly offered a day for me to come down for us to do some testing to follow on from the video that I did at Christmas 2018 which was all around the effect of covering antennas in TPU and the impact that has on the antenna's performance when you're flying. Now I had some fantastic feedback on that so back down here at the lab and we're playing around with all of that technology to answer some of those fantastic questions that you had. Now thank you to everybody that took the time and interacted with that original video. It's very clear that this is an area of the hobby that lots of people want to know more about. So a very big thank you to Greg for putting a day aside here and you may have already seen the first video in the series where we actually tested the individual tuning of a number of brand new antennas from lots of different manufacturers. This time what we're going to do is we're going to put a couple of different shrouds around antennas and assess the impact. Not only the impact on what it does to the tuning, and again look at that previous video to explain what the image is actually showing you on the screen as we go through this, but we'll cover it very quickly here as well. We're also going to test using this fantastic contraption that Greg has created, very Heath Robinson and I love it, which is a way for us to get the receiving antenna three wavelengths away from the transmitting antenna to figure out how much of the signal is being lost when we actually cover the antenna with this material as well. Now those of you that watched the previous video will remember it was using TPU, so that's exactly where we're going to start. So again, what we're doing is we're using the AX2 antenna and what Greg is doing here is putting over the shroud and doing the comparison between the two traces. Now again, very quickly, the VSWR is talking about how much of the power makes it up into the antenna and makes it out into the environment. And the dip that you can see here in this image is showing the difference between where the antenna is tuned between the blue trace where it has nothing around the antenna itself and again it's just the active elements we're talking about here things like balloons and stuff at the bottom of antenna don't care if they're covered with any material but if you cover the active elements then what you do is you go from the blue trace which is the antenna without anything on it to the yellow trace so greg what can you actually see here from the TPU? Because this is kind of what we saw last time in the original video when I made that quick one about the impact of covering your antenna with 3D printed plastic. Yes, so um, on, on this particular um, traces here, um, the blue waveform was the antenna without any sleeving on at all. And then the yellow trace is when we added the TPU um, sleeve over it. Now, what we've seen here is a shift of 174 megahertz down um, from the original tuned frequency. So this is um, basically, we, we're, we've been able to repeat and confirm from the first video that Lee done showing how it was detuning the antenna. The other thing that's interesting here is if you look at the 5.8 eight um, band or actually actually that middle red line is that 5560 five, yeah that's 5560 five, yes so that that was where the antenna was originally tuned from uh, the VSWR has gone from about 1.1 1 .1 up to about 2.0 now that's quite an appreciable uh, increase in VSWR. If you remember in the first video we talked about the fact that anything below 2 was okay uh, but the closer it got to 1 the better it was because the more power was radiating from the antenna and the less power was being reflected back into your video transmitter that has to be dissipated as heat and gives a lot of additional stress onto your FPV VTX. So you can see here that if you were using one frequency and it was fine and then you put a shroud around it, a TPU shroud, uh, you potentially could be impacting it quite a bit. Now interestingly if you are using one of the lower frequencies it might actually work slightly better here because what's happening is the performance of the antenna is better towards the lower end of the FPV frequencies available so actually it could do you a favor but you have to be aware of this okay that's TPU done let's talk a little bit more about something else now so the other 3d printed plastic that you're going to come across an awful lot is going to be 
PLA. So this is a PLA shroud put on exactly the same antenna. This is the same AX2 that we've just looked at, but with a different shroud on. So Greg, what can you see here? Right, so here, um, yeah, the blue waveform is it pretty much in the same place as the previous one. Um, but the yellow waveform is the measurement with the PLA um, fitted, the, the shroud fitted around the antenna. And what we're seeing here is it's a shift of 128 megahertz, not as much as it was with TPU, um, but still it's a significant shift in the frequency. So again, you can see here that if your antenna was working fine, so if you were you were using one of the frequencies around 5560, yeah, which is the red line. Um, and it was okay before you put the shroud around it. If you put a TPU shroud on top, then the SWR is going to jump from about 1.1 again up to about 1.6, 1 1.7, 1 uh, which is going to affect the performance and the amount of radiated energy. The last one here that we just tried out as well was I brought one of the old Ionway antennas that actually has a little sleeve that you can pop on the top because I was interested in, well, hang on a minute, this is an antenna that's shipped with an optional plastic cover that you can snap on. Is it tuned for the antenna to be used with or without? Because you can't have the best of both worlds, or can you? So this is the trace. So Greg, I know I know this made you um, grin when you saw it. What What is this trace showing you? Again, the blue is the trace before the top was snapped on, and the yellow is the trace with its with this uh, cover in place. Yeah, so this was this was quite an interesting measurement because um, without you can see the blue trace and you can see that from the low frequency five six four five all the way down to all the way up I should say to five nine four five the the VS VSWR is coming down um, when the when the case was clipped on it leveled out the VSWR and you can see that on the yellow trace. Plus, it's quite more um, more uniform across the whole range from 5645 to 5945 and below 1.5 um, VSWR. I think what they might have done with this antenna is designed it with the case in mind, but also without the case, you've got a fairly acceptable um, VSWR um, waveform there. So what that ultimately means is the antenna is designed to actually work better if you have the plastic case clipped on the top. Yeah, the tuning of the, the antenna. Tuning of yeah, the antenna. The antenna is definitely better with the with the case on, yes. Yeah. So is that pretty standard then, Greg? Is that the way that so if you're designing an antenna and you know it's going to have a cover on, you design the cover and the antenna to work in tandem to get ultimately where you want to be because I know a couple of questions I've had is well what does it mean if you if a designer adds um, a, an antenna as you get it from the factory when you when you design an antenna you have to take everything into consideration because every um, material has a dielectric constant which has an effect on RF um, each um, material will have a bigger or a lower um, effect on the RF depending on the properties of that material. So when you're designing an antenna, you have to really put all everything into the mix right at the very beginning. It's um, it's if you try and design the antenna and you bring the case in as an afterthought afterwards, you're going to have to go through all that design cycle again. So really, it's you have to be aware of the materials you're going to use at the beginning of the design and tune and design the antenna for those materials that you're using. Fantastic. Okay, hopefully that answers the question for all of those of you that have asked already. Now, the last thing that I uh, wanted to be able to test here, and again, at this fantastic Heath Robinson device that Greg has developed, I wanted to understand what the actual impact was. Did you actually lose any power? What was the impact of putting that shroud around the outside? You know, we've already seen it shifts the tuning, but what about the radiated power does it what does it do to that so what we've done here is uh, using the network analyzer that greg's been using for all these tests he's got this special heat robinson device uh, which will position this helical antenna three wavelengths away from the antenna under test and what he's doing in this video is he's zeroing it out without the cover on 
and then applying the cover. Again, using both PLA, TPU, and we also even tested the Ionway antenna with and without its plastic cover as well. So here are the results on screen. So Greg, what did you find out um, about the radiated power um, being, what was the effect that it had by putting this stuff around the antennas? So um, yes, basically um, the measurements were made um, with and without the shroud. And ideally it was just to make a measurement to figure out the, uh, the the reduction in the signal. So what we found is that with the PLA, the TPU, and the, even the um, the Omway with its um, molded cover, we were we were experiencing a dB drop somewhere between 1.8 to 2 dB across all those um, antennas. And that was really interesting because it, it, it irrespective of whether it's PLA, TPU, or that injection molded ionway cover that we used that seemed to be pretty constant now we've only tested three things here so there might be other materials that are better but it was really interesting that they were all very close to each other so what does 2 db actually mean to me as a pilot as i'm flying around because we talked a while ago you know for those of you that don't understand decibel i, I don't want to confuse you too much i refer you back to this video here where we talked a little bit about uh, what decibel means, but the, a, a decibel is a logarithmic scale, so a three decibel change is actually twice the signal. Uh, but in the FPV world, you actually need a six decibel change in order to get twice the distance. So it's a little bit complicated, but with those kind of numbers in mind, three and six dB, we're seeing a reduction of two dB. Hopefully, I'll, I'll try and dumb it down for all of you that aren't that don't live in the world of DB. What does 2DB actually mean for me as a pilot? Right, so if, if for example, um, you touched on the 6DB thing there. If, if we'd seen a reduction of 6DB and without a cover, you were able to fly, say, 100 meters, with a reduction of 6dB, that means you would now your signal would run out at about 50 meters. So 6dB is the is the gauge where uh, reduction will half the range that you can actually fly. So a 2dB reduction means that you're not going to be able to fly as far as you would um, with without the cover on. Um, you're going to get this reduction in range. Now, if you wanted to see um, the figure out the actual distance then if you wanted to you could pop onto the menace website we've got a thing on there called range calculator it's based on a series of assumptions of vtx sensitivity um, weather conditions and things like that but you can put your parameters into this of the uh, the antennas um, the vtx power and it will estimate a range so now with this in mind you could put in your db um, of before and after and that will give you a much much clearer idea of your range reduction well the bottom line is you are sacrificing some range if you cover up your antenna as well as changing the, the, the tuning of the antenna and how much power is potentially being reflected back into your video equipment on your quad or, or plane uh, that's potentially going to cause it problems over time as well so Hopefully that answers the question for those of you that are interested. If an antenna comes with a cover, it's probably, hopefully, been designed to use that cover, so that's fine. But if you cover any antenna with anything else that it didn't come with in the box, you're probably affecting your range and experience when flying with FPV. Now, during my visit to Greg and Menace RC, Greg has very kindly offered a giveaway for each one of these videos that we recorded in his lab. And that's for one of these antenna pack 5.8 gig polarized sets that has both the invader patch and antenna for your quad or plane and also an antenna for your goggles, along with all of the connecting bits and pieces. Now these normally retail for about 30 quid and if you're interested in being in for a chance to win this one on this particular video then do three things like the video pop a comment down below and make sure you're a subscriber to the painless 360 channel also make sure that you've got the bell notification icon ticked so you don't miss any of the videos as they come out or announcements about prizes or winners too
Thanks for watching the video and watching right to the very end. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you like the video and like what I'm doing here, then hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification icon too. If you really like what I'm doing, you can go the extra mile and become one of my Patreons for access to me directly for support and also giveaways and regular updates too. If you're looking for particular content, then check out the playlist. I organize all of my videos into playlists. So if you're looking for a particular topic, you can find everything here. If it's called Introduction To, it's designed to start very simply and build on that simple introduction to teach you all about it. If it's called For Beginners, then that is really aimed at people who are brand new to that part of the hobby. You can also search on YouTube for anything that you're interested in using the search function at the top. So iNav Painless 360 will find all of my videos and even the playlists around iNav. So thanks again for watching and happy flying.